Hi and welcome to Ban in a Box 2023. In this video I'm going to delve into the exciting new partial regeneration feature added to Ban in a Box 2023 for Mac. This feature allows you to easily regenerate selected parts of real tracks within your song. I'll be showing a lot of other new features as well, but one of the main things I'll be doing is using partial regeneration to create a guitar solo over this country song. And I'm also just going to go through the song and mix it and get it sounding as good as I can and maybe use some of the new features to kind of spruce it up a bit as well. So this is one of our new songs with vocals, which is part of our artist performance sets. This is from artist performance set 14 and the song is Bean to the City. And it uses this sad day real style that has acoustic guitar, electric guitar, pedal steel, and then bass and drums. And then it also has this track here, which is the lead vocal track. And on utility track one, we have backing vocals. So first of all, I'd like to pick a soloist, like I mentioned, and possibly a completely different style as well. So with the new reel tracks that we're releasing with Band in a Box 2023 for Mac, we have a whole bunch of really exciting producer Nashville guitars. So these are guitars that are designed to be layered on top of one another. And there are a bunch of different grooves that each have like six or seven guitars that are intended to really work well together. They're layered, so you get that full radio kind of sound. But you can also then mix them, bring some out and bring others in to give your song shape and character. For example, like the first verse could be very subdued with maybe only one or two guitars. Then you can build it a bit by bringing in a couple of other guitars for the second half of the verse or pre-chorus. Then bring in even more for the chorus, maybe drop out some different ones in the second verse, etc., etc. So I'm actually going to try and do that with this song. But as I said at the beginning as well, one of the things I really want to use the partial regeneration for is to sort of piece together a solo. Like I want to have a solo for the four bar intro for the song and then probably bring it back again for the break between the chorus and the second verse and probably bring it back again for the outro, that kind of thing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Band in a Box generate the solo over the entire song, but then I'm going to go in and kind of fine tune it, regenerate any parts where I want to hear something a little bit differently, and then also use volume automation to bring it in and out in the parts where I want it. So first of all, I have to find a soloist. So I'll go into the real tracks picker by just typing R T enter. That's a handy little shortcut. So this is the full list of all real tracks, which uh, you can see is over 3,700 items. And I'll filter that by Nashville shuffle solo. So that's narrowed down the list to these seven items. That contains the instruments that are actually part of the style that are still in the mixer here. But then it also shows me any real tracks that match this filter, Nashville Shuffle Solo. And that's these two. There are these two soloists that both have those text strings in them. Now this one here, Nashville Shuffle Gritty Brent. I'm going to double click on it just so I can hear a sample of what it's going to sound like. <laughs> I can also click up here to hear what it's going to sound like in the context of a band. So that one sounds perfect to me, and we made that real track with Brent Mason, one of the most recorded guitar players of all time. So I think this one here will be perfect. Now I also said I actually want to load a completely different style as well. I want to use a style that uses those producer guitars that I was mentioning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this soloist here and I'm going to use a new feature where I can control click on the items in this menu. And incidentally, this control click feature also now exists in the real drums picker and, and elsewhere as well. There are various options here, but the one I want to use is launch style picker showing styles with selected real track. So if I click here, it closes the real tracks picker and opens the style picker and it automatically has this filter entered up here which is that soloist guitar that we were looking at in the real tracks picker. So it's filtered to show styles that contains that real track. And so you can see these two styles here both use that soloist, Scuff 2 and City Life. 
So the top one in the list, scuff two, I'd like to look over here at the number of instruments column. You can see that that one has five instruments and they're all displayed here. So that has two rhythm guitars and then the soloist, that, that is the one that we were looking at in the real tracks picker and bass and drums. But if we look at the style underneath it, you can see that one has eight instruments here. Now let's have a look at what eight instruments those are. So we have bass and drums again, and then we have rhythm guitar one, rhythm guitar two, rhythm guitar three, and then we have even more tracks on the utility tracks. And if I click here, we'll see that there's guitar four, that's this rhythm guitar, guitar five, that's this rhythm guitar, and then guitar six, and that is the soloist that we were looking at in the real tracks picker. So this is one of those styles that has those layered guitars that are meant to go together. All of the rhythm guitars in this style were made specifically to work really well together and that you could bring them in and take them out throughout a song, again, to kind of give shape to your song. So that's the style I am now gonna pick. So now that city life style has been loaded to this song. Now you remember in the style picker there, there were six guitars, but now that I've loaded the style, you can see there are only five. One, two, three, four, five. That's because one of the tracks that the style used already contained audio, the background vocals that I mentioned earlier. So that's something that Band in a Box doesn't deal with automatically or give a warning or anything like that. So you do need to watch out for that sort of thing if you have songs that contain audio tracks like this and you load a new style. But I can deal with that pretty easily. What I'm gonna do is move this audio track containing the background vocals to a different unused track so that we'll then get that guitar that's part of the style on utility track one. So another new feature with Band in a Box 2023 is that there are new control click items right in the mixer. So I'm gonna control click on this track here. Then I'll go down to track actions and over to copy move tracks. Now this is a feature that existed previously, but it wasn't previously in this menu. So that makes it a lot handier now. So if I select it, we can see that this area is already populated by utility track one, since that's the track we control clicked on. And the destination, I wanna put it on utility four, which is currently unused. I don't wanna copy, I want to actually move. So now I'll press okay. And we can see now that it's moved, it's freed up that slot for guitar four from the style. So we now do have all six guitars here in this style. Just for clarity, I'm gonna change these labels here to lead vocal and background vocal. And now I'm just gonna hit generate and play. And all of these tracks, including the soloist, will now generate over this song. And we'll see how it sounds just right out of the gate. Alright, so that sounded pretty good right from the get-go there. Uh, obviously, the, the soloist kept soloing when the singer started at bar 5, uh, which we don't want, but that's one of the things that I will, of course, be dealing with. Now, I quite liked that solo for the first four bars there. Let me li just listen to that again. Yeah, actually, I, I quite like that. But I did actually want to use the first four bars to show you just the easiest way to use partial regeneration. Uh, and that is to just highlight a region and press F8. Oh, and you know what? I, I pressed F8, but I realized now that I had the background vocal track selected from when I had moved that. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind, of course, is that you have to actually select the track that you want to regenerate. So I'm going to hit no. Now I will actually select the soloist track and then I'll do the same thing again. Hit F8. All 
right. Well, I like the first one, but actually I think that regenerated one. I think I like that even better. Uh, let me try it once more and see what it comes up with a third time here. Now, I should also mention that with this partial regeneration, there are features included in that that ensure you're going to get different material each time you regenerate. So I'll hit F8 again. Now, I think I like the one before this uh, better. So another feature with the partial regeneration is that it's undoable. So I'm just gonna go Command Z to undo that. All right, so that was the one that I regenerated. Um, so I, I did two regenerations, didn't like the second of those, so I used undo to go back to the first regeneration that I did, and that's the one that I think I want to keep for this song. So now I liked everything about the soloist, except at bar five here. Uh, it seems a little bit out of place there and, and disjointed. So let me play again from bar three. Yeah, because it's playing some high notes and then it goes all of a sudden to a low note and doesn't quite sound natural. Uh, in addition to that, that's where the vocals start, so I don't even want to have the soloist going through that. So I'm going to go now to the audio edit window, and because I have the soloist track selected, that's the one that's now showing here. I'll zoom in to that beginning part, and I'll play again in this window. Okay, so I was happy right up until this point here where the vocals start. So I'm going to highlight a region here starting at that point. So I'm just going to press the delete key to delete all of the audio in this highlighted region. But before I do, I want to explain a little bit about deleting audio in these audio edit windows, how it used to work, and a new feature that's now been added. So first of all, if we look over in the mixer, you'll notice that some of the tracks here are colored green and some of them are colored orange. Now the green ones are real tracks and real drums. And as you probably know, how Band in a Box works is that when you have these real tracks loaded into the mixer, any chords you enter into the chord progression or whatever key you enter, it's gonna generate these parts based on the chords and the key and of course the tempo. Now when it does that, it doesn't actually write new audio files, it just references the source material that's included when you install Band in a Box. The orange tracks, however, are audio tracks that have been recorded or imported into the file. So with those orange tracks, that means that there is actually a large audio file, AIF or WAV file, that corresponds to the Band in a Box file itself. Now because those are actually WAV files that are saved with the song, which means they are actually taking up space on your hard drive. Not a ton of space, but they are taking up space. Now in previous versions of Band in a Box, if I was editing one of these real tracks, tracks like this soloist, and I wanted to like delete a chunk of audio like this, that would automatically turn the entire track into an audio file with the edit that I made, and it would turn this track orange to indicate that it's now a new audio file corresponding with the Band in a Box file on your hard drive. However, new with Band in a Box 2023, you can now do edits like this deleting a chunk of audio, and it no longer has to write a brand new file. The track will still just be referencing the source material that you originally installed on your hard drive with Band in a Box, and no extra space will be taken up on your hard drive. So that all being said, I'm now just gonna press delete, and that audio is now gone, and you can see Guitar 6, it has not changed color and it is not taking up any extra space on your hard drive. So let me just listen to it now with that chunk of audio gone. Down in the desert. Okay, so that now sounds great. It's now no longer soloing over the vocalist, which is kind of intrusive and, uh, and doesn't sound very good. It does seem to end a little bit abruptly here. Let me play it one more time. Down in the desert. 
so there are a couple ways that I can think of that I can deal with this uh, to, to not make it so abrupt. Um, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Now the first thing I'm going to try is copying and pasting some material into this space and we'll see how that sounds. So I feel like with these high notes that get repeated here, I just want it to play one more time at the downbeat of, of bar five, just so it's just playing something to kind of end it off. And so I could just take this chunk of audio here that's playing this note here and just paste it over here. Now again, that kind of copying and pasting is something that you could do previously in Band in a Box, but again, that would force the whole track to be written as an audio file, but that's no longer the case. Now I mentioned that F8 was the hotkey for the instant regeneration. There's also an option F8 hotkey that brings up a brand new partial regeneration dialog. This is a floating dialog that you can leave open while you're working and you can still do other work underneath it without the dialog actually closing. You'll also notice that as I select regions in the audio edit window underneath this, this range of bars here updates based on what I selected. So for example, I could try to just regenerate some material to go here and see if it comes up with something that might work okay for when the vocals start. Down in the desert where I come from. But no, I still don't think that sounds very good when the vocals come in. So you can also undo and redo from this dialog as well. But another thing you can do from within this dialog is copy and paste. So I'm just going to take this last note that gets played here and I'm going to try copying that. And once I copy it to the clipboard, you can see there are some options here. So regular paste, that pastes and overwrites whatever audio is present there. Paste merge will keep whatever audio is there but we'll merge the new audio with it. Paste relative to bar means that it will paste it in the same beats and ticks, but in a different bar. And there's an option to paste multiple copies. I just want to do the regular paste. So I'll highlight a region right around bar one, and I'll just go paste. Okay, so I got the extra note that I wanted, but I feel like I want it to last longer. It still feels abrupt, even though it's now playing right on the downbeat. So I'm going to try something else completely different here. Again, I will undo that. And instead, what I'm going to try is using playable reel tracks to create exactly the note that I want at exactly that place for as long as I want it to, to last. So I'll go into the piano roll. And it's right at bar five that I want to enter this note. So I'll just go back a little bit. So first of all, I'm going to click playable track so that I can load in this playable reel track. What that means is it's going to load a synthesizer onto this track and it will also load a specific MIDI sound that was actually made when this reel track was made with the same guitar tone and everything. So I'll press playable track here. Incidentally, it was previously called playable reel tracks, but we've now added things like playable reel drums and also the ability to use the playable track features uh, even on MIDI tracks. So it's now just called playable tracks since it encompasses those extra things as well. Now, the MIDI that we're seeing on this piano roll window right now currently is not actually playing. You're not hearing the notes that are being played here. These MIDI notes are just for display purposes so that you can see the notes that are playing in notation. So for example, if I start playback here again at bar four, we'll hear this first little part, uh, but then we'll see these notes, but that was the part that I actually deleted in the audio edit window. So we won't actually hear anything at that point. So let me just show you that right now. Down in the desert where I come from. Right, because I deleted the audio here. So I'm just gonna also delete the MIDI that's now occurring here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new note and it'll be a, the same note as these last few notes that are played here. And I'll add that 
I'm in playable real tracks mode, so new notes I enter are playable and show up colored green. So that note is added. Let me just hear how that sounds. Down in the desert. So that actually sound already sounded good, even at that volume level and everything. I'm just going to make the note a little bit longer so it lasts longer. Let me hear that again. Down in the desert where I come. Yeah, that sounded pretty good to me right there. Um, usually when I do that kind of thing, I have to then go and adjust the volume a little bit just to make sure that the new MIDI notes I've added are balanced with the other notes, but that already sounds quite balanced to me. Down in the desert where I come from. Yeah, I'm happy with that just the way it is right there. I'm going to go back to the audio edit window. Now, the vocals are still going on. I just deleted this little chunk of audio here just so that there wouldn't be anything immediately coming after it. Down in the desert where... Now, I could delete more after this, but rather than do that, I'm just going to use volume automation to bring the volume completely down at that point because I am going to want to bring back the soloist at some point. Like there's a little four bar instrumental break in the middle that I want to bring it back in. So rather than deleting anything else here, I'm just going to bring the volume down so that I know at any point I can bring the volume back up and listen to what the soloist is doing at that point. But here we go now. Let me just play this one more time here. Down in the desert where I come from The time moves slow in the mid All right, perfect. All right, now before I go any further, I'm actually going to save this song with a new name. I've completely changed the style and now I'm doing additional edits to it, uh, but I do like the original. I mean, that was a cool style that, that we had with the pedaled steel at the beginning of the video. So I don't want to overwrite that. So I'm going to save it with a new name so that I still have the original and I have this new file. So let me do that right now. Save song as, and I'll call it being to the city, producer, guitars. All right, so uh, using the partial regeneration, I'm now very happy with the uh, guitar solo intro and the note that gets played at bar five that kind of ends the solo. Uh, now I'm gonna leave partial regeneration for a bit. Um, I'll, I'll get back to it uh, once the soloist comes back in, probably after the first chorus. But for now, I'd just like to do some general mixing. I love the way the song sort of starts off with all of these kind of explosive sounding guitars backing up the soloist. But as soon as the first verse starts, I'd like to kind of bring everything down quite a bit just so there's not a, a single constant level of energy. It's, it's great for songs to kind of to build up, but then come back down and then build up again and really have an overall shape to them. So as I said, I'd like to bring it down for this first verse here. So one thing with the mix, let's have a look at this. Uh, as we saw before, the soloist is now out, but there are then five other guitars. And also I'd like to have a look at the panning. Two of the guitars are panned left, two of the guitars are panned right and one of them is panned center. So if I start bringing out guitars, I still wanna make sure that the overall stereo spectrum is still kinda of covered. So what I was thinking is that I would bring out three of the guitars and leave two in, and ideally those two would be already panned left and right. So let me just play through the first verse and I'm gonna solo a couple guitars and try a few different things just using the solo buttons in the mixer. Once I decide what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the volume automation to achieve it, but I'm just gonna use the solo buttons right now to sort of get a sense of, uh, of what I wanna do for this first verse. Down in the desert where... Alright, so I was just listening to a few of them and I tried, while I was doing that, I tried a few different pairings of guitars 
to see what I thought would be good for that first verse. And I think I landed on this. These two guitars here, they're panned right and left. And they sound quite good together, I think. So let me just play again a little bit with that little pairing there. Down in the desert where I come from The time moves slow in the midday sun Work starts early and... Yeah, I think I really like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use volume automation then to take out guitars one four and five six the soloist is already out you know what i'm going to rename this so it just says guitar solo rather than guitar six that makes it a little more clear in the mixer then so yet yeah, i'll take out one four and five so and that will be at bar five so i'll start with guitar one here i'll just remove those solos now and i will go back to the audio edit window so guitar one and now I'll zoom in to bar five here. So it's right there that I want to bring this guitar out. Now it doesn't have to be exactly at the bar line. I want to do it in kind of a musical way. So let's see, there's, uh, let me solo it. Okay, so it plays a little muted chord right there and I think I'll leave that in so I want it to come out here. So I'll turn on volume automation. I'll just click on the blue line to add a node there and then I will click and drag a new node down to here. That means the the decibel level will remain at zero right up until this point and then it'll go to negative infinity, essentially muting it. Yeah, perfect. So guitars two and three I wanted to leave in. So I'll now go to guitar four and do the same thing. Bring it out at bar five. And same thing, I'll let it play that first little chord there and then I will bring it right out immediately after. Perfect. And same with guitar five. And I'll just, I'll bring it out right before it plays the second loud chord here, uh, part way into the bar there. Great, and now I will bring everything back in and so we'll now hear that it'll just be guitars two and three that will continue on at that point. Where I come from, the time moves slow in the midday sun. Work starts early, and for your lunch break, you get a green chili burger and a vanilla shake. You take what you give and grateful to. Okay, so bar 13, it's still, it's just basically the second half of the first verse. I guess it could also be considered a pre chorus, but uh. Either way, it's definitely a new section. So what I was thinking is that at that point, I could maybe bring one of the guitars back in to build it a little bit. And then at the chorus, I could bring all of the guitars back in. So you, again, you get the full explosive kind of sound. So uh, this one might be perfect. Guitar five might be perfect here because it's panned center. So then we would have the three guitars that we would have in at that point would be left, right, and center, which is uh, a nice balance. So let me just see. I'll bring it in a little earlier and I'll just see, maybe I'll solo the drums as well. And what if I brought it in that chord there? Let's see. That's, that's great because you got this nice little slide. He's playing a chord there, sliding into the chord that occurs at the downbeat of bar 13. I really like that. So let me just see what that sounds like. Shape. You take what you give and grateful to be living in a land that still survives. That's, yeah, I really like that. Um, that you get just this a little bit of an extra push at bar 13. Here, let me listen to that again. You get a green chili burger and a vanilla 
the shape You take what you give and grateful to be living in a land Although, actually, now that I listen to it, it doesn't need to be as, quite as loud as that, I think. It can be pretty subtle. Um, so let me, do, let me just bring it down, but still in, and let's see. Burger and a vanilla shake You take what you give and grateful to be living in a land that yeah, I like that. It's a little more subtle. I, I think that's good. Um, I want to point out another cool new feature with Band in a Box 2023 as well, and that's enhancements to the VU meters on the individual tracks. They now show in stereo. So let me go back here and I'll play this again and have a look at guitars two and three. So guitars t guitar two is panned left. So when you see the the color on the VU meter there, the top of it will be a different size than the bottom. That indicates a left and right channel. You'll see the same on guitar three. It'll be the opposite. And on guitar five, everything should look, it should look like just one big line going up and down because the pan for guitar five is center. So let me start again here. Green chili burger and a vanilla shake. You take what you give and grateful to There's guitar two and three. And there's guitar and five that looks like just a single line. In the fresh clean air. Anyway, I just want to point that out. Uh, I quite like that new feature as well myself. All right, so now we're coming up to the chorus. So at that point, I'll bring back in the other two guitars. So let me just play from there again. In the fresh clean air, far away from the glare of those blinding city lights. And I'll see what's there, but maybe even the bar before the chorus, or or maybe one of the guitars can come in the bar before. So this is the this is one I have to bring back in, and guitar four is one I'm going to have to bring back in. So let me listen to guitar four. I'll bring it back for now. I'll just bring it back quite early so I can hear what it's going to be like going up to that section. <laughs> Yeah, that one I think would sound good coming in right at bar 20. So that's that's a bar before. Let me just play it with some drums too. Actually, maybe halfway through the bar. I think that's that actually might be good. And now let's see what guitar one is doing there. And actually there's a, I can see just looking at it, there's a little bit of a break here. So that might be the perfect place right there to bring in guitar one. All right, now let's hear everything coming in for that chorus. Far away from the glare of those blinding city lights and Yes, I've been to the city where the nights are greedy And the L train shakes your bones It's so dang loud, always in the crowd Yet you feel so all All right, um, I was noticing that there wasn't any reverb on the vocal and I thought it might be nice to add some. So I added some while the chorus was going on there. And now we're at this little four bar break. So that's where the guitar solo can come back in. And I'll do some more work with the partial regeneration here as well. Uh, if there's anything in the solo that I'd like to try differently, I'll use the partial regeneration for that. And so it's bars 29 to 33. So for now, I'll just bring it back in a bar before 29 and I'll bring it back out at around bar 34. I'll probably end up fine tuning this more, but for now I'll leave it like that so I can do some regenerating if I want to uh, regenerate any of the parts in this. So I'll just look at the uh, regular view here without the automation now. And let's just see what the solo is sounding like at that part right now, just as it is. All alone. Trying 
gonna make the all right so i think i do want to regenerate that again so i'll highlight the region i'll do the option f8 thing again and uh, i'll just keep this floating window up on top here and i'll use this to sort of navigate my way through this so first of all i'll just hit ok regenerate in the crowd yet you feel so all alone so many people trying to make the so that was sounding okay but i think i'll just keep regenerating until something really stands out to me that i really want to keep in the crowd yet you feel so all alone So many people trying to make the scene the so Now that one, there was a lot of stuff in that one that I really liked. Uh, but I think I'm going to keep regenerating because I can always undo and come back to this one. So I'll regenerate again. In the crowd, yet you feel so all alone. Yeah, I wasn't as fond of that one as I was the last one, but I'll try again. In the crowd, yet you feel so all alone. So many people try. And I actually wanted to show you some other options in here as well including allow lead-in, which means even though I've selected a particular range, when I regenerate, it can start the riff a little bit earlier. Now, sometimes you might want that. Uh, many times you might not want that if you've picked a region that you specifically like everything exactly up to the point where you set the region. And if this is selected, you'll see I've highlighted a region here. But with that option, it can write material a little bit to the left of the barriers that I put here. And this is basically the same thing, but on the other side of the region that you've selected. And overwrite replace existing, uh, of course, makes the most sense. If you want it to actually merge with the material that's there, uh, you can remove the check. Um, there wouldn't be a lot of use for that, but there might be some instances where you might want to do that. And autoplay, that's already selected there. And you'll notice that every time I press OK Regenerate, it starts playback right away, which I definitely want. Now here though, entire riff is different. I'm gonna click here and show you the options. So right now, entire riff is different, which means that every time I regenerate, the region that it regenerates all has to be completely different material. This option here would allow for it to be the same sometimes. And with this one here, which I think I'm actually gonna select this one, this means that when I've selected a region here, for sure this beginning part here will be different but it's okay if the rest of it is the same. This is actually a setting that I prefer because how I generally work is that if I'm going through a soloist like this, I'll regenerate this and then maybe I'll just like the first part. So then I'll change the region and start regenerating from further on. So now I have that selected here. That means that this beginning part will always for sure be different, but the rest of it might be the same sometimes. In the crowd, yet you feel so all alone. So many people trying to make the. So this was sounding pretty good as well, but I think it, about three generations ago, there was one that I particularly liked. So I'm going to just undo a few of these uh, and see if I can find that same one back again. So all alone. Oh, all So many people trying to make 
So yeah, I quite like that one. And I actually even like that it's coming in with the solo while he's still singing. So I'm just going to listen to this one more time here. So I do think this first bit should be just a little bit quieter, just so it doesn't overpower the vocals. So I'll open this up again, and I'll put a node here, and yeah, I'll just bring this this whole thing down around minus two, minus three dB. So let me hear that now. And actually, the the note kind of trails off here, so it's just at the beginning I want it quieter. So actually, that might be fine just like that, to have it start lower and then just swell a little bit, and then it's at full volume here for the main part of the solo. So I'm alone. So I liked all of that except for the end. So I'm going to deal with the end some way, maybe by some copying and pasting or maybe uh, with more playable real tracks like I did earlier. So I'll turn off volume automation now. So, many people trying to make so again, this first little bit here, I think I don't want to use, but the note that then just gets repeated a couple times, maybe I'll just have it play that. So I'm going to highlight that a little bit there. I'll bring back the Option F8 dialog. And now I'll copy that region. And now I'm going to select the whole region there. And I'm going to go Paste. So that little bit that I selected there will basically just be moved a little earlier. I'm going to play that again here. So, many people to make so the note is now being played four times and I think if I just delete this last little bit here then that might sound good. So I'm just going to do that and um, I'll use the delete right in this uh, in the regenerate dialog. However, you got to be careful not to use de delete isn't going to delete that. Uh, as you might expect. It's actually going to delete and then move everything to the right to the left. So that I definitely don't want to do. So um, so instead I'm going to select Erase here, uh, which is what I want to do. There you go. And actually I can probably erase all of this. I, okay, I was happy with that except for the last note that got played there. So this one here, I think I will delete this again as well. So I don't need to go into the dialog to press erase. I can just press the delete key. Now let me listen to that. So many people trying to make the scene. So now I'm going to put the note back using playable real tracks uh, and I'll just make it last longer because it just sounded a little too abrupt. So uh, back to the piano roll and the subways pack. And I'll move back a little bit. Here's where I want to go. So many people try. So this note here, I'm going to select it. And I'm going to go change selected notes to playable. So that turns it green, which means it actually will play that note. I'm just going to clean up uh, the rest of this by deleting all of those notes. And let's see. So many people try and I'm going to move this. And I think it was. Right there. Let me see how that sounds. So many people try. So many people try to make the. I'm gonna just lower the velocity of that one a little bit. So many people try to make. 
Sounds like it might be coming. It's not quite placed right, so it might be. So many people try. Now it's too quiet. So many people try to. That, I think, now it seems to be a good velocity and it seems to be placed better. So let me try that now. I'll make it a little longer. So many people trying to make the scene. The yeah, I think I'm happy with that now. Let me play that whole solo part here in the chord chart now. Feel so all alone. That was great. Um, I think now, though, that part I just want to have a bit quieter because the vocals are back in. So I'll just sort of... Now, the volume automation also affects, even though you can't see the MIDI note that comes here, uh, the volume automation affects that as well. So many people trying to make the... Maybe even more. Yeah, that's already sounding better. I think even a little bit more. Those don't need to be very prominent. It just sounds weird to have it cut off so much. So let's try that now. So many people trying to make the All right, so I think I'm now a lot happier with that the way it is now. So I'm going to take a little break and I'll return to this file later. So I'm going to want to save it, uh, but I think I'm going to want to freeze the tracks first. As soon as I started editing on the guitar solo track, it automatically added this, which means the track is frozen, which means that the exact performance is going to be saved with the file and pressing regenerate is not actually going to regenerate the part. But I think I want to also freeze all of the other tracks too, just so that when I return to this file later, it's going to be exactly the same. And I'll press Command S to save it, so that when I open it again and return to the video, it now will be exactly the same as I left it. All right, so I've now returned to the file and I'm gonna continue on with the second verse. So I'm just gonna to listen to a little bit of where I left off with the little instrumental break here. <laughs> People trying to make the scene The subway's packed like All right, so I'd like to bring the energy level down a bit again for this verse, uh, but maybe in a slightly different way. So with the first verse, if you recall, I took out all of the guitars except for guitar two and three. Let me just play a little bit of that again so you can hear that. Down in the desert where I come from The time moves slow in the midday sun Work starts early and for All right, so I want to do a similar thing to here, but as I pointed out earlier, there are also two other guitars that are panned, not hard left and right, but they are panned left and right, uh, and that's guitars one and four. So I'm going to do the same thing with this verse that I did with the other. I'll just do it with these other guitars instead. So again, back into the audio edit window. And so I'm going to leave in one and four, so I need to take out two, three, and five. Many people trying to make the scene. So many people trying to. All right, so starting with guitar two, let me just listen to that uh, here. Okay, so this actually would be great. What I can do is I'll have it out by then and I'll have this last chord just sort of fade out. And rather than a direct fade down, I'll add a couple more nodes to just sort of make it, a, give it a bit of a curve. There we go. There we go. 
So two is out. I'll do the same with three now. You know what? I'll just, I won't have it play that at all. So it'll come right out here. And then I also want to do the same with guitar five. All right, and this little silent spot right here is the perfect place to take that one out. All right, so I'll go back to the chord chart and I'll play again a little bit through this solo break and we'll see how it sounds then right when it hits bar 33. <laughs> People trying to make the scene The subway's packed like a tin of sardines Who in the world ever thought of this? It's a concrete maze called the Metropolis You take what you reap All right, now bar 41 would be the perfect place to bring in another guitar. Now, I think a held guitar here would be good. So this one here, guitar two, uh, now it is panned. I mean, that doesn't really matter that much. All right, so again, I'll go to the audio edit window there, and oh, I just, just need to look again. It's at bar 41 where I want to bring it back in. So that is guitar two here. So, and I'll go to bar 41. You know what? I'm going to bring it back earlier just for now so I can kind of hear exactly where I want it to come in. And actually, I'll solo it with the drums, maybe the vocals too here. World ever thought of this? It's a concrete maze called the Metropolis. You take what you reap. All right, so I I think either there. Metropolis. You take. Or just the little pickup into bar 41. You know what? First, I'll try it here and uh, bring everything in and see how it sounds uh, there and. I can, I'm actually going to boost it a little bit too. I'd really like to have that uh, be a little louder there. So, everything back in. The world ever thought of this? It's a concrete maze called the Metropolis. You take what you... No, no, I think I do want it, now that I've listened to it, I think I do want it here. And the little pickup there. So, right there. Uh, and actually even a bit louder, I think. I'll bring it, once the other guitars come back in, I'll bring it down, but I think it'd be nice to have that held guitar be a little bit louder right now. The Metropolis, you take what you're able, leave the rest on the table, always running for your lives. Truly unaware that some fresh, clean air is just a couple hours drive away. You know what? And actually, for bar 45 here, um, I mean, in general, musical phrases are four bars or eight bars long. And so, you, you know, you really feel the sense that even though it's not a new section, bar 45 is, is a significant bar in that respect. So I'm actually going to bring the other guitar, guitar three in as well at 45 here. So let me try that now. I'll zoom out. I'll go all the way back here and listen to that whole section. See, the subway's packed like a tin of sardines. Who in the world ever thought of this? It's a concrete maze called the Metropolis. You take what you're able, leave the rest on the table, always running for your lives. Truly unaware that some fresh, clean air it's just a couple hours drive away. I've been to the city where the Ah, and we also now have, uh, for the first time, we have the background vocals coming in there. Uh, that was kind of nice as well. And I'm also going to bring in guitar five, though. Uh, probably the bar before. Clean air. It's just a couple hours drive away. Maybe right there, halfway through the bar. I'll see how that sounds to bring it in right there. And what, before I forget two, guitar two can probably come 
down to just to regular volume at that point. Um, let's see how that sounds overall for that whole verse there. So many people trying to make the scene. The subway's packed like a tin of sardines. Who in the world ever thought of this? It's a concrete maze called the Metropolis. You take what you're able, leave the rest on the table, always running for your lives. Truly unaware that some fresh, clean air is just a couple hours' drive away. I've been to the city where the nights are gritty and the L train shakes your bones. It's so dang loud, always in the crowd, yet you feel so all alone. Skyscrapers swaying and the sirens are wailing like some manic saxophones. So much there, but it can't compare to a peaceful night back home. Painted red. All right, we're now at the bridge. So one of the things I like to do for a bridge is change the drums. Now the drum style that we have in this style is Nashville Radio Shuffle. And you can see it's variation one. And what that means is that for the A section, you get a snare and hi-hat part. And for the, cor uh, the B section or chorus, you get snare and ride. So I'll just solo the drums and I'll just play a little bit of that for you here. In the middle of an A section here, this is what we're hearing. So a hi-hat and snare part. And then I'll play a little bit uh, from the chorus and that will be a snare and ride part. But now that's just one variation of this Nashville radio shuffle real drum style. Other variations have other substyles as well. And you can access all of those substyles that belong to this Nashville Radio Shuffle by using the control click. So here I'm going to control click where the bridge occurs at bar 65, right on the part marker here. So now you can see here this area, it says groove variations for Nashville Radio Shuffle, and it shows you all of the options here. So Snare and hi-hat is the one that we were listening to for the verse. Snare and ride is the one that we've been listening to for the choruses because we have the B part marker. But then there are some other options. Side stick and hi-hat, that's often good for like an intro if you want a really subdued intro. Not like the intro for this song where we wanted it to just, you know, hit you over the head right away. But then here's another option, snare and ride with a cut time feel. And this one, I think, would be perfect for the bridge. So I'm going to select it. Now you can see there's a little red line indicating that there is a different setting specifically for this bar. Incidentally, a new feature with Band in a Box 2023 is that you now have the option to not show those red lines for bar settings. And that can be done in the F5 dialog. So I'm just going to go ahead to the next part markers and just make sure I have the right ones set here. It'll go back to a verse. Actually, for the, for the final verse, maybe I will try side stick and hi-hat. Maybe halfway through, I'll go to snare and hi-hat. And then for the final chorus, it will go back to snare and ride. Okay, but first of all, getting back to this bridge here, one other thing I'd like to do is that in the chart here, so far, the A part marker has been for the verse and the B part marker has been for the chorus. I'm going to just select this option here, define C and D using the same style for display purposes, just so that I can have a different color part marker just to indicate that it's a different section. This is a bridge and not a verse or a chorus. Now, before I play this, um, earlier I froze the drum track and I actually have to unfreeze it now. And when I regenerate, all the other tracks are frozen, so they won't change, but the drums will change, uh, which I definitely want right now so that I can get this new substyle here. So I'll regenerate, and then I'll start here at bar 63. That's what they say. Leaving home. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
down in the desert where I... All right, so that's that's kind of cool. I like that drum groove for that. Um, I want to do a few more things with the bridge as well. I'm thinking maybe I'll bring some more guitars out for that. And so this time, maybe I'll do a combo of guitar one and guitar two. So I'm going to bring three, four, and five out for that bridge there. So again, bar 65, go to the audio edit window. So guitars three, I'll skip ahead to 65 here. And I'll just eyeball it this time. And bar 65 here. And same with guitar five. All right, let's see how that sounds. Peaceful night back home. Painted red. That's what they said when I was leaving home. Whoa, 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 Down in the day. Now, another thing I think I would like to do here is I'd like to have the instruments hold on this chord, but then I'd also like the drums to do something a little more interesting as well. So first of all, there are shortcuts for entering chords that give you shots or holds, that type of thing. And so I'm going to retype this chord, A augmented, and then three dots, dot, dot, dot. Now that is the sort of ban in a box code indicating that all instruments should hold. So the guitars would just strum a single chord and just hold it for the duration of that chord. Um, bass would do the same. It would just play a single note. Um, drums would play like a crash and a kick or something that's just held like that. But actually in this case, I want the drums to ignore it. So what I'm gonna do is type D, which indicates the drums track. So that means all of the instruments are going to hold except for the drum track. So I'll hit enter. So that chord now appears like that. So now I have a little bit of a quandary because earlier I froze all of the tracks because I wanted them to stay the same. And some of the volume automation that I did with some of those guitars were sort of specific based on the actual parts that Band in a Box had generated that first time. And I kind of want to keep that. So what I'm going to do right now then is I'm going to use partial regeneration to just regenerate this bar. And actually, just to be safe, I'll, I'll regenerate bars 71 to 73. So I'm going to do it one by one. And all I have to do is press that handy F8 hotkey. So I'll do that right now for guitar one. Leaving home. Whoa, 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 whoa. Down in the desert where I grew up. The ice. And now I'll do it with guitar two. I don't actually have to do it with guitars three, four, and five because they are still out at this point. So I'll do it with guitar two. The desert where I grew up, the ice won't last in your plastic. Okay, I'm just gonna solo guitars one and two just to listen to that. Great, that's exactly what I wanted. Um, and again, the other guitars are all still out for that, so I don't have to worry about them. The bass, actually I have something else in mind for the bass. And I'm gonna go into the piano roll. Painted red. Okay, so the bass throughout this whole thing is just kind of doing a pumping quarter notes thing. But for this section, I'd like the bass to just be playing simple half notes. So I'm gonna make this part of the screen a little bit bigger just so I have a bit more room to see. And I'm going to hit playable track so that I can get this patch loaded and use playable real tracks. So I'm just going to delete all the notes except for the notes that occur on the half note.
And for the very last bar of this section, I'm just gonna do a whole note. So, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit just so I can access these notes a little better. So, I'm gonna increase the duration of all of these first of all. It looks like some of them are also, the MIDI notes themselves are occurring a little bit late, so I'll just move a few of these over. And the last note of that section, I'm making a whole note. Now, I also then have to just highlight all of these and change selected notes to playable. So you're, again, you remember from earlier that uh, when you're using playable tracks, if the notes appear in green, that means they will be played. So let me now hear how that sounds. Maybe I'll just solo the drums and the bass together to see how this sounds. Ah, another thing I forgot to do is I was supposed to add create mute region to mute the generated accompaniment. So this will actually mute the actual bass part so that I'm only hearing the notes that I've turned to playable notes. So let me try that again. Okay, so the notes are all quite quiet. So I'm just gonna drag across here to increase the velocity of all of these. We'll see how it sounds at that level now. That's actually sounding good. It sounded, when it went from the real track to the playable track, it sounded very similar. So I think, uh, I think I've put those at the right level now. I'm just gonna start back here again, just so I can hear that again, the transition between the actual real tracks that we're hearing up to bar 64, and then the playable notes that we're hearing at 65. Okay, so that's, I really like that. Um, and then at this bar 72, the drums are then just by themselves with the MIDI bass now, and then the two guitars playing the held chords there. But there's something else I think that I'd like to have the drums do. I don't want to have the drums just playing a fill throughout the entire thing. So I'm going to use playable tracks in the drums as well. And that's a new feature with Band in a Box 2023, playable real drums. So I'll turn on playable track. Now, in this case, really all I wanted the playable track for is to get a single crash. I'd like a crash to be played at the downbeat of bar 72. And I want that to hold, but then I want halfway through, I want the regular fill that's already part of the real drums part to come back in. So I'm gonna zoom in to bar 72 again here. Okay, so I wanna put a mute region here, starting right at the very beginning of the bar and I want it to only last for the first half of the bar here. So before I now even add any notes at all, I just wanna hear what that sounds like. So what I should be hearing is bar 71, I'll be hearing the real drums. Beats one and two of bar 72, I should hear nothing because I've put this mute region here. And then at beat three, I'll hear the drums come in. And because there's a part marker at 73, what I'll hear is the drums doing a fill. So let's just see if that's what I am hearing right now. Perfect. So it was just silence for the drums there, and then the fill that the drums were already playing came back in there. So now I'd actually just like to add a crash with a playable note here on the drums track. And so I know that a C sharp there is a crash, but uh, you can also just add a note and then just move it around <laughs> until you hear a crash. If you're not, if you're unsure where 
the drum notes are. And actually, I'm not totally sure where the kick is. Probably here, because that's what's, uh, there was probably a kick there. So let me add a kick here. Yeah, that's, that was right for a kick there. And this crash, I will just make it last longer, right up to where the fill will start then. So let's see how that sounds now. All right, I want that a little bit quieter. That, that crash was a little bit too loud, I think. Um, although the kick was probably fine. So I'm actually gonna use another new feature that if I only select one note, because I, I had both of those, I had both of those notes selected already. But if I only select one of them, then if I move this line over the velocity area here, it's only going to affect the one that was selected. So the kick will still be louder. So this line here is probably the kick, and then this line down here, if you can see it, is uh, is the reduced crash level. So let's see how that sounds now. Whoa, 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 Down in the desert where I grew up. All right. So, bridge is now done. I'm pretty happy with the way that whole bridge turned out. And now we're in the final verse. Now, if you recall, when I was messing around with the drums, I set this to side stick hi-hat. So, the drums are now very, very subdued for this last uh, verse although it does switch back to snare and hi-hat eight bars in. And so I think maybe I'm going to pair this down now, at least these eight bars, 73 to 80. So again, into here, I'll go up to bar 73, uh, bar 73. So guitar one, uh, guitar one is actually already still out. Oh, or was it? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, so bring guitar one out. Guitar two is still in, guitar three. Oh, guitar three I'll bring in, actually. Um, yeah, there we go. I'll bring it in, maybe a little quieter. Guitar four is still out. Guitar five is still out. Okay, let me see how that sounds then from coming from the bridge into that verse. Down in the desert where I grew up the ice won't last in your I think I would like this with just guitar two. So I'm going to bring guitar three out uh, completely. Um, yeah, I'll just bring it right down and start again here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Down in the desert where I grew up, the ice won't last in your plastic cup. You keep an eye out every step you take for a blue-tailed lizard or a rattlesnake. You take what you're given. Okay, so definitely at this point, some guitars come back in. And I'm going to just try bringing guitar one back in at that point. So 81, guitar one in. A rattlesnake You take what you give And grateful to be living In a land that still survives In the fresh clean air Far away from the glare Of those blinding city lights Now actually, I think 87 The two bars before the final chorus I'm going to bring more guitars back in as well so yeah, 87, I'm going to bring some other ones in. So, um, you know what, I'm just going to kind of do it randomly here. Uh, guitar 5 I'll bring back in, and what else is still out? Uh, guitar 4, I'll bring Guitar 4 back in here as well. Let's just see how that sounds. Fresh, clean air, far away from the glare of those blinding city lights. And yes, I've been to the city where the nights are green. And I should definitely bring everything back in there. But I'm also thinking that maybe at bar 87, it would be nice to have two drum fills in a row. 
just as sort of an extra little oomph to lead into the final big chorus. So this is again, another new feature in Band of the Box 2023, is that I can enter drum fill wanted for this bar. Now the partial regeneration unfortunately does not work with drums. So if I do now want to get this drum fill in here, I'm actually going to lose the specific drum fill that was here at bar 72, but it will still keep the mute region for the first half. It'll also still keep the playable reel tracks there. So you know what? I'm going to trust that it's still going to be a really cool sounding fill at the end of there. And so I'm going to press regenerate again so that the drums will regenerate. I'll listen to that. And then I'll also listen to these two drum fills in a row here from 87 to 88. So regenerate. And then here's that part again that we did in this section. Yeah, still sounded good to me. And let's check out this. Fresh clean air, far away from the glare of those blinding city lights. And yes, I've been to the city where. So yeah, that's you got just a little bit of an extra oomph here with the drums having two fills in a row like that. Let me just play solo the drums and I'll play that there. Anywhere the nights are greedy and the L train shakes your bones. It's so dang loud, always in the crowd, yet you feel so all alone. Now, I just want to double check that all of the guitars are in by this point. I think there might still be one out. So we'll go into here again. I will go to bar 89 and I'll just check all the guitars. Guitar one is in, guitar two is in, guitar three is not. Okay, so just before the chorus then, guitar three comes back in, four was already in, five was already in. Blinding city lights And yes, I've been to the city Where the nights are greedy And the L train shakes your bones It's so dang loud Always in the crowd Yet you feel so all alone Skyscrapers swaying And the sirens are wailing Like some manic saxophone much there but it can't compare to a peaceful night back home all right so great little last double chorus now halfway through the chorus i do want something else to give this just a little more of an oomph here it's the last chorus and it's a double chorus so so i want to just add something else so what i was thinking there are some backing vocals in this song, of course, that we've been hearing uh, for the last couple choruses, but I want to enhance that even more. Now, those were specific parts recorded for this song, but we also have vocal reel tracks. So I think if I add another vocal ensemble on top of this, then it, it'll really make it more of a choir feel, which I think would be great for the last half of this chorus. So uh, I'm gonna add a new track here, Utility 5. And then I'm gonna go into the real tracks picker here. So I'm gonna enter a filter here to find a little vocal ensemble that might suit this. So I'll type vocal and maybe I'll just type shuffle as well. All right, so it is still showing me all of the instruments that are in the style itself, but then with the filter added, it's also showing me these ones that have vocal in the title as well as shuffle in the title. So there's this three part shuffle here and then there are some uh, individual vocal parts like high one, high two, double, etc. So they're all gospel shuffle but this one here is an actual three part vocal section. Although it's actually six voices because each of the three parts is doubled. Now there's another new feature in Band in a Box 2023 and that is real track stems. So with the previous version of Band in a Box, we added real drum stems. And that was a very useful feature that allowed you to access the audio files for the individual mics that were miking the drums for our real drum styles. 
That was a great feature to be able to import into a DAW. And then you have the individual stems to do a full mix of your whole song. And you could customize the mix exactly to your liking. So that was a really great feature. But we've now added this new feature, Real Tracks Stems. So this is a little bit different in that this applies to these types of ensemble real tracks, like vocals or string quartets or horn section styles. So this one, for example, I showed you this real track here is the three part, so six voices all together. And then we had these individual voices that you could also access. However, if you picked several of these individual voices, they wouldn't generate together, so it wouldn't be so they wouldn't be singing a specific ensemble part together. They would just be more or less randomly singing their own parts, but in different ways. With the feature now, we can select just this main reel track here with the three parts, but we can separate the stems in this area below here. So you can see here it has a mix, and then it also has the soprano doubled part. So this is two soprano voices singing here, the high alto doubled part, again, this one is two voices singing here, and the alto low doubled part, this is two voices singing there. You also have the options of just the very individual voices, so there are then six of those. So with all of these, the parts will generate together, so they will all be in sync with one another, and yet you have them on different tracks, so you can mix them differently, add effects differently, that kind of thing. So for this one here right now, um, I'm not going to select the mix. I'm just going to select the doubled soprano, the doubled alto high, and the doubled alto low. So these tracks are now going to load on three separate tracks. So I'll close the real tracks picker. And so we can see it's now loaded those three different parts onto three of these utility tracks. So I'm gonna generate these parts, but then I'm gonna go into the audio edit windows and lower the volumes for all of them so that I can just bring them in at the end there. All right, so I'm now just lowering the volume for all of those three vocal tracks. And now I'll go ahead to bar 97, which is where I want to bring them in. And the soprano. And let's listen to that coming into these. So Skyscraper swaying and the sirens are wailing like some manic saxophone. So I'm going to bring the volume down. I just want these to sort of be present but not overbearing. Peaceful night back home. I'm going to listen to that again. I'm going to solo the existing backing vocals along with those and see how those sound together. Yeah, so that sounded very nice. All right, so here's the very last chorus uh, in its entirety here. So much there, but it can't compare to a peaceful night back home. All right, so I think now at that point, uh, and maybe even a bar before, I'd like to have the guitar solo come back in. So I'll just bring it in right now at bar 104, and then I'll see, um, or maybe even 103, and then I'll see if within those two bars there is kind of an appropriate place uh, to bring it back in 
uh, more precisely. So click on guitar solo and then it's here, here's bar 103, so. To a peaceful Alright, so as far as where it comes in, so maybe starting right with this note here. So we'll zoom in there, and that might be a good place right there. And I think the volume is good once the solo comes in with this little lick here. But before that, I still like it, but maybe uh, I don't want it to be overpowering the, uh, the vocals too much. So let's see how it sounds now. So I think I liked it right up until that point there. Uh, let me just listen again. I might use partial regeneration one more time uh, just to get that, but I, I, I liked everything up to that point, I think. Yeah, let me just try from that point on, so select right there um, and actually in this case I definitely liked everything right up to that uh, that point right there so when I go into the dialogue I'm going to um, I'm gonna actually make sure that it doesn't overwrite anything before that line so I'll actually go into the dialogue again with option f8 and I'm gonna go into the options again and not allow lead in. Alright, so I think I like that one there. Uh, also, I have plans to fade this out, so by, that, by the time it gets to the very end there, I think it will already be faded out. But one last thing I want to do before I do the final fade outs is, I was thinking I might want to add one more little vocal part to this. So I'm going to bring back one more utility track, and for this one here, I'm going to leave the same filter here, Vocal Shuffle, but you'll notice here there's this option here, a background soloist. So this is a similar style, the Gospel Shuffle, but in this case it's actually a single female voice doing improvised melodic parts. So I think that might be kind of cool at the end as well. So I'm going to generate this part again over the whole song, but I'll take it out at the beginning and only bring it back at the end. And then I might do some editing to kind of fine tune it and see if I can get it working really well with the other voices and the other instruments. So I'll generate track. So you could kind of hear it, uh, what it was doing at the beginning there. But, uh, I, like I said, I will bring it all the way out and let's see where I might want to bring it back in. So let me just play uh, the choruses again here. Into the city where the nights are greedy and the L train shakes your bones. It's so dang loud, always in the crowd, yet you feel so all alone. Skyscraper swaying in the side. So much there, but it can't come. So I think I want to bring her in here at bar 97, halfway through this uh, final double chorus here. 
So, bar 97. So why don't I just bring her in a bar before and just see how it's sounding there uh, with her singing along while while the lead uh, is doing the chorus there. If you feel so all alone Skyscraper swaying and the sirens are wailing like some manic saxophones So I think actually I'll bring I'll leave her out until he actually sings that line like some manic saxophones because uh, that kind of is a good there's a little break there and that's also kind of thematically kind of cool that you got this uh, this cool wailing kind of voice just coming in right at that moment. The sirens are wailing like some manic saxophones. So much there, but it can't compare to a peaceful night back home. Now, this little lick that she sings here actually might be better in that place. Um, well, I'm going to give it a try. I can always undo, as we've seen before. So I'm going to highlight this region right here. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm just going to paste it right here. So I'll see how that sounds. And like I said, I can always undo it. So much there, but it can't compare to a peaceful night. All right. It was a good part. I'm not sure now that it's playing over a different chord, it might not be... The notes might not be correct. Yeah, that's actually not that good. Let me listen and see what's happening here, because this is actually a G chord. So if I brought this back there. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to try that instead. I'll copy this. Copy. And paste that here instead. Yeah, actually now I, that part I really liked and I like it to have it just come in for that and maybe a little louder. Uh, so let's see how that sounds right now. So much there, but it can't compare to a peaceful night back home. All right, so that's where the solos then coming in. I'll also see what it sounds like uh, to see what she's singing here. To a peaceful night back home. Now, again, with the soloist playing there, I wasn't sure if all of those little licks here were good. And actually, I think I'm going to remove these ones here, but I'll leave this one there. So I will erase that area there. And now I'll listen again. Yeah, I quite like that. And I like that I've made her part a little bit more sparse. So it's not just constantly singing lick after lick. Uh, it just comes in and out. I think that's the most effective for this part here. All right, so there is a final thing that I'm going to do, and that is to add a fade there. So once the chorus is over and the guitar solo starts, I'm then going to start a final fade out. So fade outs are something that you could do in Band in a Box in the past. Uh, the F5 bar settings dialog, you could use that to, to do fades, although they were a little clunky in that it's it was just every single bar, it just decreased by a certain uh, dB. Then last year when we introduced volume automation, you could go to every single track and put in volume automation to do a fade out, but that's pretty cumbersome. 
Uh, but now, new with Band in a Box 2023, we've added the master track where you can do volume automation that will affect the entire thing. So that makes a fade out much easier to do because I can just do it to this track here. So let me just play back and see when I want to start the fade here. Oh. Okay, so I think I want to start the fade more or less at bar 105. And the end of the song, the, the two bar ending starts at bar 113. So I want to have it all the way out at some point by 113. So let me just see how that sounds if I put a node here. And then I just put another node here and just drag it out there. Let's see how this sounds with just a direct fade from there to there. All right, I think that's a fairly good distance, but fades don't usually sound as good if it's just a direct line like this, where it's basically it's like taking the volume fader and just evenly dropping it from one place to another. Generally, they sound better if it's a bit of a curve. So if I leave it up like this and then sort of gradually curve it down and then flatten out the curve at the end, I think that's going to be a more effective fade out. So I'm going to add a few more nodes here. I'm going to just have it coming down a little bit to there. So it'll be just very gradually that you'll hardly even notice it. And then here I'm going to have it drop a bit more steeply, like so. But then it'll but then here I'll have it just last a little bit longer. So you'll hear it, you'll still hear it when it's very quiet for a little bit longer. And I think that will be a, a more natural sounding fade. So let's see how this sounds now. And yeah, I think uh, for me anyway, that was uh, more satisfying to hear the fade done that way. All right, so that gives you a good sense of some of the new tools in Band in a Box 2023 for mixing and for creating the exact part that you want. Uh, it's a lot of fun to do and, and I've really enjoyed working through this file and I hope you enjoyed watching it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna play through the entire file so you can hear it from start to finish. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and have fun. the desert where I come from The time moves slow in the midday sun Work starts early and for your lunch break You get a green chili burger and a vanilla shake You take what you give and grateful to be living In a land that still survives in the fresh clean air far away from the glare of those blinding city lights and yes i've been to the city where the nights are greedy and the l train shakes your bones it's so dang loud always in the crowd yet you feel so all alone Trying to make the scene The subway's packed like a tin of sardines Who in the world ever thought of this? It's a concrete maze called the Metropolis You take what you're able Leave the rest on the table Always running for your lives Truly unaware that some fresh clean air it's just a couple hours drive away I've been to the city where the nights are greedy And the L train shakes your bones It's so dang loud, always in the crowd Yet you feel so all alone Skyscrapers swaying and the sirens are wailing like some manic 
Six sacks of bones So much there But it can't compare To a peaceful night back home Painted red That's what they said When I was leaving In the desert where I grew up The ice won't last in your plastic cup You keep an eye out every step you take For a blue-tailed lizard or a rattlesnake You take what you're given Grateful to be living in a land that still survives in the fresh clean air far away from the glare of those blinding city lights and yes i've been to the city where the nights are greedy and the l train shakes your bones it's so dang loud always in the crowd yet you feel so all alone skyscrapers swaying Sirens are wailing like some manic saxophones So much there but it can't compare To a peaceful 